The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft koala bear of Wall Street, David White. It is May 19th. We're getting kind of long in the tooth into May and springtime over most of the United States. Of course, uh, we had kind of an early spring down here in a very mild winter uh, in uh, Tampa and Clearwater, Florida. But uh, I have to say that uh, after a couple of hot days last weekend, uh, the weather has turned absolutely perfect down here. And uh, I can almost feel what you probably are feeling up north after a long and cold and miserable winter. Uh, just uh, being out uh, Sunday night, walking the dogs around the neighborhood, and smelling the barbecues starting to fire up around here. Uh, just uh, it was one of those days. And it was today, too, when I went out and walked the dogs about 30 minutes ago, walked them around the neighborhood and. Just uh, you could smell somebody cooking somewhere, and uh, the breeze was soft. So just a little cloudy. Yeah, the sun's out, but it's not uh, overpowering and burning. It's just one of those days that uh, makes you extra glad to be alive. I'm glad every day, but this would be one of the days that I would be. I would be sad if I missed this day. It was an absolutely gorgeous. Even if it's just uh, five or ten minutes outside at a time, absolutely gorgeous. Of course, uh, going to be uh, already planning my big outing this weekend. Uh, going to go sailing for uh, three days down the coast of uh, Florida. So I'm hoping that the weather holds and it's gorgeous and beautiful. And uh, hope uh, wherever you are listening to this at, uh, you know, the weather is going to hold for you into this gorgeous weekend and uh, eh, just a wonderful day. Of course, when we look at the uh, stock market out here, uh, up six points on the S&P cash, 1.64 billion shares. We were talking Friday pretty much how the volume is going to really start to uh, pull back and that starts, eh, probably started pretty much Friday. Uh, I was pretty happy with my call uh, and looking at the options in the uh, newsletter uh, Friday morning. I said uh, we were going to close up probably five to seven points. We closed up seven. I think I even said that on the show when it was up about three points. Uh, pretty much uh, they pushed the market exactly where they needed it to get it for options expiration. And what else can you do about that? Uh, they are uh, doing it. So uh, I think we can kind of focus on things that will make us money more long term than maybe in the next few days. I suspect we're going to have a, a, a market like today, uh, which is going to be up two, three points, light volume. And we're going to probably do that into Friday. I think shorts uh, that have overstayed their welcome uh, that can get out probably should. I think when we come back next Tuesday, that's going to be an opportunity to see whether this market can actually break out and go to higher highs with any kind of volume. Of course, I am expecting lighter volume, so uh, probably not a lot of enthusiasm for much higher prices, but I think we could see that this week as the shorts uh, get the drip, 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 or the uh, paper cut of slightly higher prices until they blink. And uh, that normally is enough to set a new high in the market, which I think we're going to do before the end of the week and maybe even into Friday, uh, make it almost unbearable for shorts to uh, hold their shorts. And uh, maybe your play is to short the uh, close on Friday or wait until we come back Tuesday few things moving this market today. 
uh, can be probably, I would say, uh, summed up to Putin moving some of his troops or saying he's going to move some of his troops off the border. Uh, but it's unclear whether they have or haven't, whether it's a head fake, maybe they're going to invade in the morning. But uh, we shall see. Today in history, in 1568, the earliest known junk bond is issued as a Russia company borrows 4,000 pounds, 8 shillings, and 10 pence from the British uh, Chekur. The uh, loan is priced to yield at 13.5%, and the company must repay it, not with cash, but with hundreds of tons of cables and rope. And uh, that's making it one of the earliest asset-backed loans as well. So uh, we uh, are going to have an interesting day when we think there really isn't that much new in the market. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. Uh, and uh, we'll always enjoy your phone calls. You can also today email me at path at tfnn.com. I will start checking my email at the first break. Or you can post a message in the den, although it seems rather quiet right now. I think I can hear some crickets in there, but uh, I digress. So, let's get a little bit into the news uh, that we're seeing out here. On Thursday, uh, a new bestseller arrived at the offices of Hatchet Book uh, with good news. One of the publisher's books uh, actually had vaulted to the number one spot. But bad news, because if you went on Amazon.com and thought you'd get the book in a couple of days, like almost everybody else, you'll see that it usually ships within three to five weeks. Uh, pretty much a lot slower than what Amazon prides itself on. Amazon is starting once again to start throwing its weight around. And my thought is that we've got a couple of companies out here that are ripe for the Justice Department to come after them for monopoly power. Uh, I was thinking about this over the weekend as I saw some of these articles about uh, them playing hardball with their suppliers, that being Amazon. And today we're already starting to see people talk about uh, maybe Google, especially in Europe, Google being a monopoly. Now they can't force uh, monopoly rules because they really don't have any over in Europe really to speak of. But uh, they're saying that we should break up Google, or at least that's the original rumblings. And, of course, uh, it put Apple, or not Apple, put in Microsoft into a 10-year funk uh, of them fighting the whole monopoly issue. And we could see that with a, mono uh, with a Amazon or a Google, too. Uh, not saying it's going to happen, but we're starting to hear the first kinds of cries out there that, both Amazon and Google are using their powers for evil. And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on those companies. But uh, when anybody says a stock can't come back down, there are a lot of reasons why a stock can head much lower, whether it be uh, Apple or Amazon or Google. Uh, it can have a wonderful business model. It can be too successful. And, of course, they can throw their power around and make enemies in the government. And that's always one of the problems and one of the things you need to watch for in a business model is uh, how do you stay out of the crosshairs of an activist government when we see, uh, oh, just like now, uh, we've got the Justice Department uh, pushing around people that are selling items that are covered under the Second Amendment. These companies have done nothing illegally or illegal, uh, but yet the Justice Department is pushing around uh, bigger companies to make and try to cut off their financial well-being. It is not uncommon to see both uh, companies at the ire of the king or queen of a country. We're not supposed to have one. We're supposed to be under the rule of law, but uh, I think that's been put on hold a little bit. Uh, with the, in the last uh, 10 years, I would say. And it has come to a boil as of late. But I digress. 
we've talked about coal, and I know, I think Andy thought he liked coal a little bit. I'm going to try to talk him out of that. That is Andy Heck, who comes on after me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The EPA will launch the most dramatic anti-pollution regulations in a generation early next month. A sweeping crackdown on carbon that offers President Barack Obama his last real shot at a legacy on climate change by causing significant political peril for red state Democrats. These will come online. Look for electricity prices to rise anywhere from 25 to 50 percent in some states. Kentucky uh, gets almost 90 percent of its power from fuel. And as recently as uh, 2010 had the country's lowest electricity prices, they could double in Kentucky or triple. Don't look for anybody with a D in front of their name to get elected to even th- a dog catcher, I suspect, uh, when people start seeing these massive new uh, prices for energy, uh, they will probably come after the people that did it. And uh, I think why that is an issue politically, I think what you can say is that natural gas is probably the best play. I don't like that uh, natural gas, there's a lot of it, but uh, we can see that the government has decided that uh, they don't like coal whatsoever. Expect that in the next six months, mm, the last uh, bunch of people in the coal business will probably go bankrupt. I don't know how they can get asked uh, what these uh, rules will be. And uh, there's a bunch of cap and trade and other ridiculous uh, items in this. Basically, they should have just outlawed coal and have been done with it, but uh, kind of doing all these backdoor things. You may love coal, you may hate coal, uh, but it doesn't look like anybody's going to challenge uh, the administration on this issue. So I'd say uh, short coal, long natural gas, and uh, watch out for the political ramifications this fall, especially in some states that get a lot of their power from coal and see absolutely incredibly huge soaring electrical bills in the middle of the summer. There have been some estimates that, especially the, let's say like over uh, winter or this last winter, that there could have been uh, as many as 10,000 dead uh, from not being able to heat their homes, uh, even on electric power, because it just would not have been available. And uh, can you say that you don't want uh, more pipelines to move natural gas and at the same time cut off coal? Uh, Something's going to have to give before next fall, and that will be interesting. But I have a feeling all of it does uh, and goes for better natural gas or higher natural gas prices and lower coal prices unless they can find a way to export coal. A lot of countries love it. They're still going to burn it. Uh, us not burning it, probably not going to make a huge change, more symbolic than anything else. Uh, but uh, we shall see. We'll be back in just a minute. I'll look for your emails or your phone calls at 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we uh, come back, uh, UK drug maker AstraZeneca is prepared to reject Pfizer's latest $117 billion with a B offer for the firm, according to uh, Financial Times. And I think that went through the rest of the day. But that was pretty much out there uh, at the open. What we did see is AstraZeneca off uh, 9 bucks or 11 or 12 percent uh, today. And, eh, I think that's probably kind of to the lower end of it. But it uh, looks like uh, Pfizer's uh, up a couple bucks, but not a big deal. But uh, took a little bit of the wind out of the sail of the open this morning. Of course, it didn't take very long for that uh, to continue on. And uh, we have an email from Janice. We'll be looking at DDS in just a little bit, too. Uh, but uh, we can do that. YouTube has reached a deal to buy the popular video game streaming company Twitch for more than a billion dollars. If you've never heard of Twitch, you don't play video games. This is a service for those who want to talk between themselves as they play on teams. It also allows you to watch professional video game players, if you can believe it. And uh, many of the uh, people that love playing these games play them you know, 10, 15 hours a week, especially the first-person shooters and, uh, and the ilk, that ilk. Use this a, a great deal. In fact, anywhere between 5 and midnight, they use more bandwidth on the Internet than Yahoo, Google, and uh, most of the other sites out there. It's only exceeded by how much data is being used by the uh, people at uh, Netflix. But uh, 
getting a billion dollars and kind of an interesting play out here. It's more like a Skype for video gamers than anything else. And uh, it uh, kind of been interesting. I, I like this idea. I like that they're not throwing more than a billion away. And of course, uh, YouTube is owned by Google and uh, not a lot of uh, risk, I think, for Google spending a billion uh, for one acquisition compared to a lot of uh, the acquisitions we're looking here at uh, higher rates. Uh, we've also seen GPS become more common. Uh, just, uh, I thought this was an interesting story, but uh, it seems like a lot of drugs these days are being stolen, robbed, re, uh, re uh, sent to uh, new countries. And I was kind of surprised to see just how many Viagra bottles these days, uh, not just heroin bottles, are now and do have GPS devices literally installed in them in some of the capsules and the bottom of the bottles. And, of course, if you're in a big hurry to steal something, you're not looking to see whether or not there's a, a GPS sender on it. I know that Intel uh, puts in a lot of GPS trackers in the, their big shipments of processors, other high-dollar equipment. But uh, kind of interesting to see that the, that pill bottle you have, if you got it by mistake, may have a GPS sensor in it. Anyway, they found uh, a uh, gentleman that uh, had been stealing uh, pills uh, by just going to his house, finding the GPS tracker, and that's it. Uh, so uh, a little bit of technology uh, actually being used. Of course, so many smartphones have GPS trackers in them. Kind of funny why the uh, police aren't going back and getting those folks, but uh, who can tell? For those that have listened to this show, they know how big a fan I am of Nasim Tlaib. He, I, although I had heard of um, Karl Popper before we, uh, uh, before I started reading uh, uh, "Fooled by Randomness" from Nasim, it's always interesting to see what you think you know and how it can be shattered by one discovery. If you watch the news over the weekend, they found a huge dinosaur bone, and this is the upper thigh bone. Uh, it was about uh, 10 feet long. Uh, that makes the dinosaur that uh, it came from uh, not 40 feet tall, as the tallest T-Rex was thought to bend, but about 65 feet tall. And, of course, if you've ever read uh, Fool or Randomness, you understand the whole black swan issue. And that is that you really can't prove anything true. It's easy to prove it false. And uh, especially when we're trading out here, we may think that we know everything that's going on. But it only tr takes one piece of evidence to prove that maybe we don't. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to be talking about that and Apple. But uh, the old black swan theory coming to raise its head. And uh, we'll be back to talk about that in just a minute. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at TFNN.com or you can post a message in the den. And uh, we'll try to answer all those. On Fridays, I do not have email. So uh, I occasionally I'll get a people that will uh, email me on Friday. And I try everybody Friday, no email, just the DIN or phone calls. So I always show up here Friday night and get a bunch of emails after I uh, come back from the studio. And, uh, that, well, I, nothing I can do about that. Uh, SAP and Microsoft are ganging up uh, to go after the Amazon cloud. Uh, kind of weird to see SAP, such a ardent competitor to Microsoft for all these years. Of course, uh, Microsoft and Oracle don't get along that well. SAP and Oracle don't get along that well. SAP and Microsoft pretty much haven't gotten a along very well. But uh, they're kind of giving a group hug and saying, uh, why can't we be friends, at least on this issue, uh, and going up against Amazon, which will be interesting. Of course, we saw Rackspace last week talking about trying to sell themselves off, especially with Amazon and Google always dropping their prices and making it a loss leader to sell their software. Uh, pretty tough for a company not invested in actually uh, doing that. Uh, probably the most interesting chart I saw over the weekend was the rapid uh, movement of Xiaomi. That's 
X I A O M I. If you're not familiar with it, this is the company that started in China a couple of years ago using basically Android phones, but making it at a very, very low price and going after the business in China. The latest sales figures put back in now puts Xiaomi as a bigger unit manufacturer than Apple. Xiaomi hit 10% in the last week uh, for the last following three months compared to Apple's 9% and not in China, in the world. So as we watch a lot of these manufacturers that move huge units, if you're watching on Tiger TV, you'll actually see the chart from Business Intelligence, from uh, Business Insider. But uh, the next big uh, hit would be Samsung at 18%. But uh, they are rapidly moving into and taking over a lot of the uh, Chinese business at the expense somewhat of Samsung and uh, a great deal of what Apple thought that their business would be over there. I think Apple's still a status symbol from everything I read, but still uh, problematic in the fact that they are not going to get a lot of uh, people's business other than the people that actually own those businesses and use the iPhone S as a uh, status symbol. Uh, interestingly enough, the uh, Xiaomi people did talk about how many people were buying uh, Apple uh, 5Ss and 5Cs, the C being the slightly cheaper version. They're saying basically almost nobody in China buying the slightly cheaper version, that uh, they are buying the expensive version, and it is uh, the form of the Rolex in China now. But I thought it was interesting. It is a bad, mad market, and I hope you do give me a phone call today. Well, we do look at uh, some of the stocks that are moving. Did want to get to uh, DDS and a question from Friday from our email bag. And uh, we'll look at that right now. Dillard's, of course, it broke out on Friday. I suspect that that's what they were talking about. Let's look at a little longer time frame. So Dillard's DDS did break out. It brought, broke out with significant volume compared to the last high with 480,000 shares December 23rd. Uh, we look at a longer-term chart, uh, a huge volume day of 2.5 million shares on Friday, 2.67 million shares, a definite sign of a breakout. And I think uh, what we have here, JJ asks, uh, could this be a tradable short? And the answer I will give is I don't think so. You would probably, this is one of the stocks, few stocks that actually is broken out above a consolidation range and it's done it with a sign of strength. You've got a nice gap there. If the market goes higher, then I'd be wanting to buy this back at 100 bucks or 99 bucks on a light volume pullback. This is a uh, not a short candidate at all. I kind of like it. It's probably going to come back 10 bucks. But I think that there are a lot more weaker stocks out there that we can be uh, looking at to uh, come after. Anyway, uh, that's just a few of the uh, things that we are discussing out here today. Let's see. Let's go back here. Look. Uh, a few other stocks that are moving today wanted to take a look at. NVDA is NVIDIA. Uh, this one has popped a little bit, but really hasn't broken out of its trading range, which is down to about $17.60 up to $19.46 at the very high. So you've got about a $2 trading range out here. Not a lot of volume, but an upgrade has moved NVIDIA just a little higher. AMX, uh, CPB, let's see if there's anything else out here. JCI, make a quick look at that. Up uh, 4% earlier today, and holding that, Johnson Controls. Uh, Automotive Trim Systems Incorporated, a wholly subsidiary of HiU Automotive Systems Corporation, says that the component group in uh, China announced the signing of a definitive agreement to form a global automotive, uh, automotive interiors joint venture. And a uh, nice pop there, but again... Uh, it is a light volume day, and you can have some big moves, uh, but mostly those moves will tend to 
fade fairly quickly. It does look it does look like you've got uh, that February third low at nine point seven million shares tested with April twenty eighth. It went below it, closed above it. The volume shrank from that nine point seven million shares to the seven point four million shares, and I had a nice little pop out here today, but it really doesn't get it out of the trading range. Let's see what else we have out here moving today. Uh, in the mid caps, uh, some of these uh, dead cat bounces are happening. One uh, I'm watching today is Fire Eye. Again, this thing's probably going to come back up and try to fill this gap right around thirty-five dollars, uh, maybe just a hair under it, thirty-four fifty. You had that huge volume day down. It's gone sideways for a little while, up on a lighter volume so far today. Of course, a day's not quite over yet, but we will. Uh, continue looking at that, but eh, not a whole lot out here. Looks to me like uh, you're going to get mm -hmm, you got a uh, high of $30 today. Uh, you could get back in that $34 range, and then that would be it. And, of course, you are moving into that candle from the 7th that had 23.2 million shares. question is how many times it's going to have to bounce through that area. The high of that day was $31.25. It's going to be pretty tough to get back through much of that. Of course, FireEye made a huge uh, splash right after a Target's decision to come out and talk about their credit card problems. FireEye identified them fairly early, and of course, they became a huge mover after that uh, fall, uh, almost Christmas time move uh, with the credit cards. Been fading for quite a while really don't make any more money. They got a lot of press, but uh, didn't get enough traction. Really turned this into a hugely profitable company so far. Let's see what else do we have out. Cliff Naturals. We talked about coal early in the show, and I know Andy will probably be talking about it tomorrow. But uh, to me, we're back here at the lows. You want to be watching as Cliff Naturals comes back to this $15.41 low out here today. Uh, Wall Street uh, Journal is reporting that India iron uh, ore output may decline due to court-ordered shutdown of some of their mines. And uh, may boost it a little bit. Doesn't seem to be doing anything for it today. Of course, all those stocks in the uh, China sector uh, did very well on Friday on the uh, election of the new government, one that really hasn't changed in any significant way as a majority since uh, the uh, country went independent from the British. And, of course, uh, now they've got a commanding lead over there uh, for the capitalist part of the government. And we saw all those stocks moving. Maybe we'll get a chance to look at them before the end of the day. I did want to look at a few other stocks that uh, we were uh, looking at in the newsletter today and see how they were doing. Aceto Corporation, ACTO. I kind of like this one. Uh, I had it in the newsletter this morning uh, and uh, probably didn't get it fast enough. Uh, but uh, we are seeing some of these stocks come and see and test these app ups uh, that are acting as support. Uh, this originally gapped up November 8th of 2013 with 1.2 million shares. Tried to get into it with 1.5 million shares on February 7th. I had a nice little bounce out here. So pulled back down. A lot of energy this time, though. Yeah, but it still looks like this uh, 1750 range, eh, probably where buyers start coming in. You would have liked to have seen a lot more of volume on today's move, but it may take a while to break down through this $17 range. And, of course, you had that low uh, on Friday at 1665, and a nice little bounce out of here today. But eh, for the most part, this thing's probably in a bigger trading range to $21.50, down to the $16.65 we saw on Friday. Uh, BP, British Petroleum, another one I'm watching up here at the highs. Of course, we saw crude higher today by $0.61. Cents. And when we look at that, really wanted to see it came back into this high from January 25th at $51.02. 8.7 million shares. We got 6 dollars 
8 million shares the first time it tried to get into it uh, the 8th of May. And, of course, the last two days, 5.6 million shares, 3 million shares today. So BP uh, kind of hanging up here on thin air. Of course, 63 cents still puts crude in this higher trading range, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. But uh, we'll look. But uh, one of the things you have to think about is or not this big gap at $44.50 uh, $44 probably gets tested. You had a huge sign of strength off this, uh, but uh, this last real move up to this high from $46.26 cents really had a uh, nice move up. Uh, the CBOE, of course, the uh, CBOE holdings, uh, kind of banging away on the lower end of this move lower. I don't like uh, and am watching this one closely. February 13th, you had a low with 520,000 shares at $48.22. Got into that for Friday on a, lot, on a heavier volume, actually almost double the volume of, of 950,000 shares. We went and didn't go below it. We still a nickel uh, below. So I'm watching very closely to see whether the CBOE uh, breaks that major low from January 13th and uh, certainly had enough of volume on a probably on a light volume day anyway so uh, I think what you want to be doing is having that one on your radar uh, for a while Let's see what else we have going on here da -da 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 -da. just check everything and see if there's anything that's going on let's take a quick look I haven't checked it in the last few minutes of and we're up seven points on the S and P cash. Is that right? Still all right? Yeah, seven, seven points at eighteen eighty four point nine three. The interesting thing is the one point eight billion shares on the New York Stock Exchange consolidated tape. If you are going to break out, we're probably going to need something in the range of four point eight billion to five point five billion shares for a real sign of strength, and uh, that is going to be problematic. Equinix. E-Q-I-X, when we uh, take a look at this, one of these other ones I'm watching up here at these highs without a lot of volume. Let's uh, pull up the profile on this real quick. But uh, less than half the uh, volume at the high, and that was even, I think, Friday's. Is that Friday's volume? I think it was. We'll look at it here in a minute. February 20th, 196.20 cents, 2.1 million shares. Of course, the last four days, 700,000 shares. 580,000 shares, 720,000 shares, uh, and uh, you just, it's just hard to see a lot of volume in this movement up here. Uh, they are a data center services to product and connect the information assets of the enterprises, financial services company, and content and network providers primarily in the Americas, Europe, and Middle East connects companies directly to their consumers and partners in network data centers about the uh, Equinox interconnection platform. Well, that's clear as mud. Anyway, a light volume up at this top and an expensive stock. So I'm watching this. We'll be back in just a minute. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. We're going to look at a few other stocks. Uh, Fossil out here we saw uh, get absolutely slammed and eaten like a redheaded stepchild. Decimated last week on earnings. Uh, down on heavy volume, trying to get at least some of that back, uh, but a little doji out here on light volume. I think what we can see is probably uh, that shorts will slowly cover over this week, but we'll probably want to be watching some of these stocks uh, as we come back on Tuesday and uh, take a look at them. Uh, MNKD is another stock out here moving today. Uh, big blog article somewhere out here. On Mankind, of course, uh, a staffing agency. Uh, this thing it did pop up on a huge volume from $3.80 uh, back up to uh, $8.08. Looks to me like this is headed back up to that $8.08 level. But uh, yeah, volume a little bit better in the last couple of days, why it was doing nothing. But, uh, you get kind of a, a lot of noise out here at some of these uh, companies. Uh, off uh, about 4% is ATK, as we take a quick look at this. Uh, Alliant Technical Systems, more of a doji out here today. Not all the kind of volume we like, especially going back into two levels of support. In this case, the uh, 10th of January, where this thing uh, popped up on 1.15 million shares came into it with half that volume on February 20th had a nice run up to 158.13 coming down heavy volume 
down day on earnings last week uh, and now a doji, but certainly back into these uh, trading ranges. Uh, this one, if you could get this thing back at 126, 127 in that range and volume becomes light, that should be interesting. But uh, try to get down to 128.15. So we are down in those candles, uh, but certainly not getting that kind of volume. So uh, if you have to uh, have some bad news, not a bad time to take a look at it. Some stocks that may be making some ABC downs are Herbalife, HLF, of course, under investigation. Uh, a giant football between the titans of, was it Ackman and Icon, uh, both fighting over this as short and long. Uh, pretty bearish move out here. This thing is just now getting into this heavy volume day down in March 12th. Uh, where it saw almost 16 million shares come down. And, of course, we look at a day today where we get 900,000 shares. Looks like it's going to be tough. If you were uh, looking at this as an ABC down, you could look at just a one-to-one, -one, taking it to uh, $41. Uh, let's see if I can't get this. Yeah, $41.09 just on a one-to-one -one ABC. If you use the smaller version of this, the larger version could get bigger. Basically, you had your 618 uh, retracement, actually 6.22, or six, yeah, 0.622, excuse me. And that takes you right in there. So uh, if you are looking for shorts, there are a few of them out here. I hate to be short a stock uh, of a giant stock uh, manipulator like Carl Icahn. And uh, we are going to look at Apple next. Of course, he came out Thursday night with his new filings. And I had been short Apple, uh, didn't get enough on the downside. I got out of it. Uh, but what we do see of these moves, for the most part, uh, is a lighter volume. But uh, with Carl behind it, doubling down on his long, going to be kind of hard to think uh, that you can be better than him, at least in the short term. Long term, I have a feeling he may have a problem. Anyway... We're going to be watching a few stocks after uh, for earnings this week. Uh, but between now and then, remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.